All right, I'm going to show you how to make some wonderful glass tiles. Um, if you've been in any of the home decor marketplaces lately, glass tiles are hot. Uh, no pun intended there. All right, this is what we're going to do. We've got a glass tile mold. This is made of ceramic bisque, and it needs to be pre-treated or primed with our special primer that I've mixed with alcohol. It's called Mold EZ, and it's easy to use. So I'm using a soft brush, and I'm going to simply brush on one coat over the entire mold. And you're probably wondering, why am I painting that outside edge? Well, just in case a little bit of our frit lands on the edge that I don't catch, it will simply be able to be picked right off the edge, and it won't adhere to the mold at all. This mold can be used literally a hundred times. So we want to take good care of it and prime it properly. So we'll get it all completely coated with our mold EZ. Okay? So we're completely covered. Now we're going to start filling our mold with glass. We've got lots of things to choose from. When you're looking into the surface of your mold, this is the way your tile is going to look to you. You're looking at the front of the tile on the front of the mold. So the reason I say that is sometimes when we're filling a cavity, we think we're going to remove it and look at the pretty side. That's not the case with glass casting. What you see on the front will be the front of the, of the tile. So we're going to start by looking at some of the options we have for filling this mold. I've got a little scrap piece of some art glass that um, I can include. I've got some of our glass pebbles, which are rounded little baubles of glass. I've got some rod dots. So if you remember from other parts of our video, I showed you how to slice the rods. So we've got those to add. We also have glass chips. So I've got a few red chips here. And I've got just a little scrap piece of some dichroic glass. This will give my tile just a little touch of wow. Like, what's that in there? Kind of like looking into a fish tank. The majority of our mold is going to be filled with glass frit. So this is going to be kind of like the filler. So I've chosen glass, two glass frits that are transparent, and one that is opal or opaque. So I'm going to go real easy on the opaque. Um, otherwise, it will block out anything that's underneath it. So let's start by filling our mold. Let's start with some of this amber frit. And we're just going to sprinkle this. We're going to think layers. Think of looking through a fish tank or through a window. So we're going to build this up. So this will be furthest away from us. So we'll look at amber as our background color. I'm going to sprinkle it a little bit more liberally. Not going real solid, because I want there to be some spaces for some other colorant. I'm also going to add a little bit of red. And I'm going to go easy on the red, because I don't want it to take over my amber. So you can see it's just leaving little, almost like polka dots. Remember, when glass melts, any sharp edge will pull in on itself and become slightly rounded. So though these pieces look very jagged and rough on the edges, they will appear slightly rounded after they're fired. I'm going to save the black to put it more towards the surface. Now, I need some filler, because I need to fill this mold up pretty full. So I don't want to use a lot of my colored frit. I want some filler frit. So I'm going to make my own. So I have my trusty mosaic nipper here. And working over a basket, I've got some scrap pieces of clear glass that I'm simply going to take a bite out of and just break apart into little nibble bits. So they're slightly larger than the medium sized frit I've been using. Okay, so I've got a whole basket that I've done before you got here. And I'm simply going to sprinkle this in. One thinks it's getting away. Get him in there. Everybody into the pool. Just drop them in. So this is merely going to take up space to give my tile a little bit of thickness. All right. So we've added some bulk. 
Now let's look at some of our design components. Now I'm going to add this beautiful spirit glass. I'm going to lay him on the side. See that? Put a couple of chips. Kind of like making a time capsule in glass. Lay those in there. Now I'm just going to randomly drop some of these rod dots. Got some blue, some green. So our finished tile will then have little specks of that unexpected color. Maybe a big blob of gold. All right, now it's time to add a little bit more fret. So let's repeat with a little bit more of our amber. I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top. So all these other decorative bits will now be encased in glass. And this frit is transparent, so even though it looks very opaque now, it will become more clear when it fires. Let's add a little bit more of our clear glass. You know, I'm feeling kind of extravagant today. One of the other things we can add is dichroic glass. So I've got this little scrap piece. I'm going to set that in kind of as a surprise. You can also add one of our dichroic cut-ups. These are nice inside of a tile because they're already cut into a shape. It won't distort during firing. So we'll have this beautiful metallic spiral. Let's put that right in the middle of our tile as a wow factor. Remember I talked about having a little bit of black? This is opaque or opal glass, so we don't want to use a lot of it. It will cover up anything that's underneath it. So we're just going to add a peppering of it, just for some interest of how do they get those specks in there. So it will look kind of like cr fresh ground pepper. Just a few. So when they look at it, they'll be, hmm, how do they get that in there? All right, and we're going to finish off with our clear glass. I'm just going to go ahead and dump it on. Okay. Now I've got a few large pieces of scrap laying here. I'm just going to lay this over the center area of our design and I'm going to carefully sweep this excess frit that I got on the edges back into the mold cavity. But I'm doing it very gently. I don't want to do it rough because I don't want to push our mold separator, our mold EZ, into our tile. So let's add a few more bits. We're just going to lay this on top. Now you'll notice that I'm kind of doming the center of my tile. I'm doing that deliberately. So when this melts, it will completely turn to liquid and, and the excess glass that's in the center will work its way to the edge and give us a nice rounded edge. So I bet you're dying to see what this is going to look like fired. So I happen to have another tile that I've just taken out of this mold. And you'll notice I did sneak a little piece of dichroic glass in there. And you can see all the different colors of frit that I have sprinkled. I've got green and purple and amber, a um, little bit of black. But you can see how dimensional that looks. It's like looking into a, uh, an aquarium. So you can see everything is trapped inside of that glass. So this piece is going to be put into the kiln for a full fusing temperature. Um, if you refer to the website under the glass f uh, fusing tile molds, there will be a printed firing schedule there for you. Um, so this is ready to go. 